we are going to present the video presentation on the topic forest versus australian securities and investment commission uh, in this group project we are five members me myself sudita sakhe subhasni lama kejan tanuga harpreet kaur and uh, farheen bora uh, we are going to defend forest and then for skew metal group limited is an australian iron ore company it is the fourth largest iron ore producer in the world and uh, andrew forest is the chairman of the company and neil power is the ceo of the company and this case is all about the breaching uh, different provisions of the corporation act and uh, we are going to discuss on three arguments on behalf of forskew metal group and forest Now, Subhasni will talk about the factual background of this case. Hi, my name is Subhasni Lama. My student ID is TIA two five two three. I'm here to talk about the factual background of the Forest Q Metal Group Limited Company. In the late two thousand four and early two thousand five, the company made an announcement about the binding contract with the three Chinese state-owned business to build, finance the mine, rail, and port infrastructure. for forest skills project uh, the framework agreement was made with the announcement of the binding contract which the chinese company approved for after the chinese company approved for the agreement they made a they started to negotiate with the forest queue to acquire the entity interest in forest although there was no agreement in mentioned in the framework agreement cut after the majority of the stake was not Uh, in favor of the chinese uh, company the australian review australian finance review announced that chinese was quoted as denying there was any binding agreement between the forest queue company limited uh, the australian securities and investment commission asic in 2006 march announced the uh, comments proceedings against the forest queue company limited as follows Forest Cues had engaged in misleading or deceptive conduct by announcing that the framework agreement was binding. The company breached its continuous disclosure obligation that arises under Section 6742 of the Corporation Act as they failed to inform market about the terms, effect, and uh, significance of agreement, and also did not correct the announcement made to the market. And the company also breached the director's duties of due care and diligence under the section. 481 of the Corporation Act. Over here, I am going to dis, uh, discuss about the issue uh, A, which is on the case Forest and Forest Q versus ASA. So my issue over here is that did Forest and Forest Q breach continuous disclosure provisions of the Act under Section 674 of the Corporation Act? And the law I am going to you, uh, use for defending my issue over here is that the Section 674 of the Corporation Act, which is about the continuous disclosure, according to which here some uh, like uh, some situations on which this section applies. The section applies to listed disclosing entities, all the entities which are under a binding contract with some other entities. If they want to disclose their information. they have to follow the rules and regulations of the section 674 and the second requirement over here is that the entity has information that these provisions require the entity to notify to the market operator and if in any entity want to release or reveal their information they have to always notify their market operator which is in contract with them and the application i am going to defend uh, against my issue is that for sq did not breach section 674 of the act as the company ensured that it correctly disclosed all the agreements all the required information in relation to the announcements according to the terms of the framework agreements so the company before re uh, revealing all the like information they follow all the policy and procedure which is required to reveal the information in the market and the uh, after that the preparation of the agreement they have checked while making the agreement with the uh, company and while revealing the information they checked its accuracy and they also confirm with the person who has a good knowledge of the contract law and the next 
The next one is that that the COE of the company, Mr. Forrest, who was he was not only he was not the only one person to reveal uh, all the like information, which is that he is blaming on all this. And uh, by discussing all these arguments, here I am giving a conclusion of my issue is that on this basis it is proved that Forrest had taken all the responsibilities. So he is not uh, he is not accused of uh, like breaking Forrest and Forrest use any obligations. So thank you. The next uh, argument will be discussed by another group mate, Praheen. Thank you so much. So now I am going to describe about second argument of this case, which is. Forest did not breach director duty of due care diligence under section 180 in the bracket 1 of Corporation Act. Issue, main issue is did Forest breach director duty of due care and diligence under section 180 in the bracket 1 Corporation Act. So describe about this issue, I am going to use what this law is actually say. What is this law? So director of corporation must exercise their power and discharge their duty with a degree of care. If where a director or officer of a corporation in this corporation circumstances occupied the office held by and the second one had the same responsibility with the corporation as the director's officer. And in the third one we can say that in order in order to see if director has exercised creation of degree of care and diligence the court in ASIC versus Doyle. So application should be Forrest has no personal interest in making the agreement and announcement of the process where in case to be appreciated also decision were taken for the benefit of company. So in this case uh, it says that Forrest made this for the company's benefit, like company is going to making good money, good, good goodwill in the future. So, in the basis of that, we can say that this uh, forester did not breach any duty and negligence under section 180 into bracket 1 Corporation Act. So, now Kinchel, my another groupmate, will describe about third argument of this case. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kezan Tandukar, student ID EMV 8650 and I'll be discussing about the case Fortescue Metal Group uh, with John Andrew Henry Forrest versus the Australian Securities and Investment Commission and the argument that we're going to be presenting that I'll be presenting is the issue in this case determining was Fortescue involved in misleading or deceptive conduct as per the section 1041H of the Corporation Act 2001. By announcing framework agreements as binding contract, did Fortescue Metal Group Limited engage in misleading and deceptive conduct? So the argument is basically the section 104H1 of the Corporation Act states that an individual should not engage in activities that is misleading or deceptive or is likely to mislead someone or falsely wrong them in relation to a financial or monetary products and services within an organization. While in the section 1041H2 and 1041H3 contains the condition of being involved in relation of a financial product and the activities that clashes and different sections of the law in regards to the disclosure statement. The announcement made by Fortescue and Forrest was exactly based on how framework agreement was made. Both Fortescue and Forrest were honest and had reasonable ground that the announcement was according to the agreement and would not possibly give misleading or uh, deceptive meaning to the audience by referring to the term binding contract as the audience were the potential investors and some business related persons as well. So we can say that Fortescue and Forrest was acting honestly and reasonable steps were taken to the agreement and released it in the media as well. Also, it is pretty much that the Fortescue and the Forest were unknown of the SRCE's information and its rule. SREC is an Australian subsidiary of the Chinese powerhouse. Forest relied on Hating, who prepared the agreement with the CREC and didn't know the necessary elements for an agreement to be enforceable. So we can conclude by saying on this basis that Fortescue and Forest did not engage in any kind of misleading and deceptive in regards to the financial services about the contract. Thank you.